All puppies are born with the possibility of becoming wonderful dogs. Achieving their full potential requires a little help from their human companions. With the right veterinary care, nutrition, and training, you can raise a better dog. That's why the puppy pros at Purina say better care makes better puppies. Hi, I'm Char Bibiak, head trainer and behaviorist at Rolston Purina Company. My little friend and I are at the Purina Pet Care Center, the world's largest single facility devoted exclusively to dog and cat nutritional studies and care. And what begins with research ends with love. No one knows pets like Purina, and no one works harder to help them live longer, healthier lives. Owning a puppy is a lifelong commitment. In return for all the joy and love he gives to you, you must give him what he needs. You must provide a good home for him, lots of love and care, and teach him how to be a good dog. Purina Puppy Chow has developed this video to help you get to know your special friend and help him become a happy, healthy, and well-mannered dog. I've studied canine behavior and trained many breeds of dogs for over 15 years, and I can tell you that a well-trained dog is truly a joy. If you follow the suggestions on this tape and take the time to practice and learn how to be a good owner, you and your puppy can share a lifetime of love. He will have fun communicating with you by obeying your commands and receiving your praise in return. At Purina, we take a positive approach to raising and training puppies. I call it preventive training. It's much easier to prevent bad behavior than to correct mistakes. Investing some time now to understand your dog's natural instincts will benefit you greatly for years to come. Dogs prefer the company of others. So their natural condition is to live in a pack. A pack is their family unit. The domesticated dog has inherited this behavior, so the human family he joins becomes his pack. In every pack, there must be a leader to whom other dogs look for direction. So someone in your home must be the designated leader. If you work with your puppy according to his nature, you can shape his behavior easily. In this video, We'll cover a wide range of important topics, like what to do before bringing your puppy home, crate training, nutrition, housebreaking, veterinary care, and of course, puppy training. To help you learn each puppy care basic, training segments will end with an opportunity for you to practice with your puppy. These reviews are a good opportunity to pause the tape, take notes, and try it yourself. Come on in and we'll introduce you to puppy care basics. let's cover some things you'll need to get ready for your puppy. Before you bring a new puppy into your home, you should be sure there's nothing hazardous lying about. Clean up antifreeze from the garage floor. Antifreeze is sweet tasting and sampling it could be fatal. Also pick up nails or other sharp objects. Some common house plants and chocolate are toxic to dogs. Ask your veterinarian or consult a puppy information book to get more information on these potential hazards. There are a few things you'll need to buy for your puppy. For training and walking, you'll need a six-foot leash and a soft adjustable collar that can expand as your puppy grows. For your puppy's safety, he should wear an ID tag so he can be returned to you if he gets lost. You can order an engraved ID tag with the offer on each package of Puppy Chow brand puppy food. It's very tempting to let your puppy loose when you first bring him home, but limit his freedom to one room until he is trained. A baby gate is ideal. This will help teach him to earn his freedom by listening to you. If you already have your puppy and he's been allowed to roam the house, start confining him now. Many pet owners don't like the thought of putting their puppy in a crate because they are afraid the puppy won't like it. But humans and canines are different. Dogs feel secure in small enclosed spaces. Your puppy looks to you for love and security, so you must provide a place of his own, his den. Dog crates make excellent dens. Have a crate ready when you bring him home. His crate will give him a safe place to stay when you're away or when you cannot watch him. Keep his crate where he's part of the activity. I recommend keeping the crate in the kitchen. The crate will be instrumental in housebreaking, which we'll cover in detail later. Select a crate that is appropriate for your dog's size. It should be just big enough for your puppy to stand up, turn around, and lie down. If it is much bigger than that, it will not feel like a den to him, and he may sleep in one end and soil the other. 
If you have a large breed puppy, one that is going to become several times its size when grown, you can purchase a crate with a divider, like this one. That can expand as the puppy grows, or purchase two or three crates in increasingly larger sizes. Let's take a look at the day this puppy, Lewis, arrived. When you bring your puppy home, immediately take him to the kitchen and show him the crate. You may place a couple of safe chew toys inside the crate. You should have non-tippable food and water dishes nearby. Lewis, kennel. To get your puppy acquainted with his crate, toss one piece of puppy chow puppy food inside the crate and say, kennel. Shut the door for a moment. Repeat five to ten times. Praise him using his name. Practice this exercise several times, each time increasing the length of the time the door is closed. Keep an upbeat attitude, thereby reinforcing the type of behavior you want from your puppy. You may find that the pup is reluctant to go in her crate. Pick up the pup's front feet and place them over the threshold. As you push her bottom inside the crate, repeat the kennel command, close the door and praise her. Good girl, Spring. Offer her a kibble of puppy chow, then let her out of the crate. It's a good puppy. All right. Repeat four or five times, or until she begins to enter her crate willingly. Spring, kennel. That's a good girl. Okay, good girl. If your puppy whines while in her crate, or if she tries to refuse the crate, look for some potential causes. For instance, she may be spending too much time in the crate. She may not be getting enough exercise, or you may be inconsistent with your training. But if you follow these important points, your puppy will grow to love her home. Yeah. Good behavior is how your puppy earns his way out of his crate and into other areas of your home. When he is out of his crate, he needs to be watched constantly so you can correct inappropriate behavior immediately. Proper nutrition is another essential part of raising a better dog. Now we'll take a look at how Purina Pet Foods are developed with my husband, Dr. Dave Bibiak, Director of Pet Nutrition and Care Research. Hello, I'm Dave Bibiak. Purina Pet Foods are developed by highly qualified nutritionists with extensive knowledge and experience in the field of pet nutrition. These experts develop foods designed to provide specific benefits to dogs and cats. Then the foods are proven through carefully controlled feeding studies conducted with the real experts, the hundreds of dogs and cats who live at the Purina Pet Care Center here in Gray Summit, Missouri. The Purina Pet Care Center, a 337-acre complex, is the largest facility in the world devoted exclusively to the advancement of knowledge of pet nutrition and care. More than 35,000 dogs and 10,000 cats have been raised at the Purina Pet Care Center, providing a state-of-the-art learning environment for the study of dogs and cats at every life stage. Our team of nutritionists, veterinarians, and behaviorists devote themselves to learning everything they possibly can about puppies. And one thing they've concluded is that puppyhood is the most critical phase in a dog's life. Some of these puppies may appear full grown. However, they are still growing on the inside. Take Dugan, for example. He looks like an adult dog, but he's only seven months old. Our ongoing feeding studies have shown that puppies have special nutritional needs for at least the first full year, up to two years for some larger breeds. This means your puppy will develop best on a food that is specially formulated to meet the unique requirements of a puppy. Purina Puppy Chow provides the appropriate balance of essential nutrients puppies need to help build strong bones and muscles. Your puppy depends on you to provide the nutrition he needs to develop into a healthy adult dog. For unsurpassed nutrition, feed Purina Puppy Chow. Puppies like the taste of Puppy Chow, which is very important at this stage. The taste and the pieces are designed for puppies. When you feed Purina Puppy Chow, you can be sure it's delivering all of the nutrients a puppy needs. By feeding complete and balanced nutrition now, you can impact the lifelong health of your dog. Once you choose Puppy Chow, you should follow these three basic feeding guidelines. Puppies can benefit from a consistent diet. Feed your puppy the same food at the same time every day. This will help prevent digestive upset and help with house training your puppy. Very young puppies, six to eight weeks of age, should be fed three times a day. Older puppies, twice a day. And always provide your puppy with fresh drinking water. Studies at the Purina Pet Care Center indicate that avoiding overfeeding may help a puppy's development, especially for large breeds. 
Follow the feeding guidelines on the puppy chow package for recommended amounts and monitor your puppy's weight, making adjustments as necessary. Obesity is unacceptable during puppyhood or at any time in a dog's life. Later on in this program, you'll find out how to monitor your puppy's weight and body condition. Growing can be stressful to a puppy's digestive system. It is normal for your puppy to briefly lose her appetite or occasionally experience digestive upset. Simply continue your consistent feeding regimen. If the appetite loss or digestive upset should become severe or last longer than a day or two, contact your veterinarian. Puppyhood is the time to establish good eating habits. Never feed your puppy from the table or supplement his meals with anything other than an occasional dog treat. Unless there is a medical problem, Purina Puppy Chow has everything your puppy needs and should be fed exclusively for the first year or up to two years for some larger breeds. Don't switch to an adult dog food until your puppy reaches maturity. Dietary transitions can be difficult on a dog's digestive system. Transition over a two-week period by gradually substituting a portion of his puppy chow with an adult Purina dog food. Staying with a carefully designed and thoroughly proven Purina pet food minimizes dietary stress and ensures that your dog's adult food measures up to the high quality standards you've set by feeding Purina Puppy Chow. Feeding our puppies here at the Purina Pet Care Center has shown us that better care makes better puppies. The crate is an excellent tool for housebreaking. Because it is your puppy's den, his instincts will tell him to never soil where he sleeps or eats. But you must be fair to your puppy. Never put food or water inside his crate because he will have no place to eliminate after a meal. Good morning, Lois. The first one up in the morning should take the puppy out of his crate, put him on a leash, and immediately take him outside. Establish a designated area where you want him to relieve himself. Encourage your puppy with a command like, go potty, or hurry up. Do this at the same time every day. Always return to this spot and your pup will soon recognize and understand that this spot is the best place for him to eliminate. And soon he'll associate eliminating with your command. Once he has done his duty, praise him and say his name. Then take him inside and give him Purina puppy chow and a bowl of fresh water. Hey, Luz, want go outside? Shortly after he's finished with his meal, which should be in about 15 to 20 minutes, take him outside again. Establishing an elimination spot will help you tremendously when you take your puppy for an exercise walk. Later in the tape, we'll cover the heel command, and you'll train your puppy about appropriate behavior while on a walk. He won't be tempted to mark every tree and bush along the way because you have already taught him to eliminate in his spot. Proper diet and scheduling is an essential part of housebreaking. By giving your puppy food and water at regular times and taking him outside shortly thereafter, you are training his digestive system to work on a schedule. Take your pup out regularly during the day, before placing him in his crate, and once again before bedtime. Let's review housebreaking. The early riser in the family should take the pup out of his crate, clip his leash to his collar, and take him to the designated elimination spot outside. State the command, go potty. Wait as long as necessary. When he's done his duty, praise him using his name. Once inside, give him Purina puppy chow and fresh water. After about 15 minutes, take him outside again and repeat the housebreaking routine. Mom, I think Louis had an accident. Oh. In the beginning, there might be an accident. Contrary to popular belief, you shouldn't rub his nose in it. Never hit your puppy or throw him out of the house. He won't remember his mistake. He will only learn to fear you. Clean the area and take the rag outside to his designated spot. The scent from his other visits and from the rag will cause him to want to eliminate. Now you must prevent the accident from happening again. Use a pet odor neutralizer so he won't eliminate in this spot. Now, if you're lucky enough to catch your puppy in the act, you have an even better chance to correct his behavior. Use a low voice and say, no, or ah, and your puppy will be so startled that he'll stop whatever he's doing, including relieving himself. Then immediately take him outside to his designated spot to finish what he started. 
Use your elimination command, and when he's finished, reward him with lots of praise. If you're having trouble teaching your puppy to eliminate on command, review the exercise with everyone in your family who's participating in training your puppy. Everyone must be consistent with handling the puppy. For instance, everyone should use the same command in the same manner, so the puppy can learn quickly. This also lessens the chance of the puppy being confused by different techniques. The crate method is a good way to housebreak and train your puppy, but you shouldn't crate him for long periods of time. If you must be away all day, ask a neighbor or someone you trust to come in and let your puppy out at the same time each day. This is not just for elimination purposes, but to give your puppy some exercise and social contact. Remember, dogs are social animals. And if left alone for too long, they start to wonder what they've done to be separated from their pack. They should never associate the crate with isolation. Your puppy will develop better muscle control around 16 weeks and will be able to wait longer to relieve himself. You can generally figure how many hours your puppy can stay in his crate comfortably by adding his age and months plus one. Spend time with him, bond with him, and you'll find that training will become easier. Show him your love by being a responsible puppy parent. And if he's out of the crate, you must watch him carefully so you can teach him the rules of your household. Sometimes puppies bark excessively. It's all right to allow him to bark once or twice when someone comes to your door. But you can let him know it's time to stop by saying quiet in a low voice. Then praise him when he's quiet. If your puppy continues to bark, clip a leash to his collar. Say quiet. Pop the leash forward to get his attention. When he looks at you, praise him. Tell him to sit. Help him into the sitting position. Repeat this practice session as necessary. We'll cover the sit command later in the tape. Review that section and it will help you in your efforts to control excessive barking. Biting and chewing are challenges owners face with their new puppies, but puppies need to chew, especially when they're teething, which can occur between four months and one year of age. Chewing is one way puppies relieve stress and excess energy, or it may be that the puppy isn't getting enough exercise. When you catch your puppy chewing on something that is off limits, ah, say no, no or ah no. in a low voice. Then give your puppy a safe chew toy. When the puppy chews on an appropriate toy, let him know you approve. Avoid games like tug of war or rough play because those games will encourage mouthing, biting, and aggressive behaviors you'll have to correct later. Regular veterinary care is another important part of providing better care, especially during your puppy's first full year. Now we'll meet Dr. Larry McDaniel, a veterinarian with Purina. All puppies need regular veterinary care. In fact, their lives may depend upon it. Without the proper care and vaccinations, a puppy can be susceptible to a host of illnesses. Select a veterinarian before you bring your puppy home. Get recommendations from friends, check credentials, then find out if he or she is right for you. It's best your puppy's initial visit with the veterinarian be as soon as possible after her homecoming. Within 24 hours would be ideal. Your veterinarian will probably want to see your puppy every two to three weeks until she's through her 14th week of vaccinations. Let's look in on Dr. Grace Long, who's with an owner and her dog discussing the importance of preventative medicine. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Dr. Long. Hey, Skeeter, how you doing? Skeeter is 14 weeks old now? Yes, he is. Okay, well, he's ready for his last set of vaccinations. Now, what vaccinations does Skeeter have to get today? He needs his last distemper vaccination, and I'd also like to get him started on a heartworm prevention program. Okay, I can't believe he's so big already. He looks pretty good. He's, mm -hmm. he's about the right size for his age. Okay. But while you're in today, I'm going to teach you how to monitor his weight and his body condition because it's really important to prevent obesity, and it may help your puppy's development. Okay. okay. The way we monitor his weight is to give him a healthy hug. Healthy hug? Healthy yeah. hug. Let me okay. show you how to do it. Up we go, Skeeter. Yeah, stand up, Skeeter. Okay, put your hands on his back and reach down over his ribs. Now, you should be able to feel his ribs easily. Can you feel them? Yes, I feel them. Great. Now, as he grows, you want to keep giving him healthy hugs. And if you can't feel his ribs, then maybe you should begin to reduce the amount of food that you're giving him each day. Okay. 
Now another thing you can do is to check his waistline. You should see an hourglass shape. To most people, Skeeter looks like a normal healthy puppy. But when you look at him from above, it appears that Skeeter may benefit from losing a couple of pounds. These illustrations show dogs in various body conditions. A dog's body condition can be categorized into three broad ranges or scores. Very thin, fit, or overweight. Most of us could agree on what is meant by very thin or very overweight. But judging whether your dog is truly fit can be more difficult. Give your dog regular healthy hugs, but if you are unsure, ask your veterinarian to help you determine your pet's body condition. Now let's take a look at some puppy health care basics you should practice between veterinary visits. Your puppy's eyes should be clear and bright, and the area around the eyeball should be white. If you see any discoloration or discharge, or anything that looks abnormal, take your puppy to your veterinarian immediately. You should check your puppy's ears about once a month too. If the ear canal is red, inflamed and hot, has a foul odor, or if your puppy scratches his ears excessively, consult your veterinarian. These can be signs of ear mites or other problems which are easily treated. For the health of your puppy's feet, it's important to keep his nails trimmed. If you start clipping the nails when he's a young pup, he'll be more likely to cooperate when he's older. One of the most important decisions a pet owner will ever make is whether to spay or neuter his dog. Far too many dogs and cats are euthanized each year. So if you're not involved in a responsible breeding program, you should spay or neuter your puppy. Often this procedure is performed between six and nine months prior to the onset of sexual maturity. If you've adopted your puppy from an animal shelter, it's likely that this procedure may already be taken care of. If not, your veterinarian will advise you on the best time. The surgery is routine and you can expect your male puppy to be back to his energetic self within a day. Spaying requires abdominal surgery so female puppies may take an extra day or two to bounce back. Better care makes better puppies, and neutering can make your puppy an even better pet, since aggressive territorial behavior will be reduced. Neutering may help your dog have a longer, healthier life. Follow your veterinarian's advice on the proper health care for your puppy. You should also ask your veterinarian for advice and counseling on behavior and training. More and more veterinarians are offering this type of service to their clients. Your puppy only has one chance to grow. Help him do it right. Now is the time to socialize your puppy to other people, animals, places, and situations. Early socialization and behavior training can start with grooming. A puppy submits to you during grooming, thereby reinforcing the fact that you are the leader. Furthermore, regular grooming promotes healthy skin and coat and provides an enjoyable bonding experience. Grooming is also a great opportunity to check your pup for parasites like fleas or alert you to problem skin conditions like lumps or rashes. You should have grooming tools which will differ depending upon your dog's coat. For short-haired breeds, use a rubber curry. If you have a medium to long-haired breed, use a slicker brush. Long-haired breeds should be groomed daily with a sturdy metal comb so the coat doesn't become matted. Now let's go outside and start training. Now I'll cover some important exercises which serve as an introduction to training. Remember to pause the tape to practice each exercise or command with your puppy. And as your puppy successfully completes each command or exercise, praise your puppy and show your approval. One way to communicate your approval is to reward your puppy with a treat. I prefer to use puppy chow, which is a small kibble. That way you won't upset a properly balanced diet. When you're training a puppy, keep it positive by beginning and ending each session with playtime. Keep sessions short, only about five minutes for a young puppy. The first thing to teach your puppy is submission, which you've already started teaching with grooming. 
Again, because dogs are pack animals, you must teach your puppy that you are the leader of the pack. Simply pick your puppy up like this and talk to him gently until he stops wiggling. Good boy! That's a good boy! Once he stops squirming, reward him with a kibble and plenty of praise. That's a good dog. If your puppy struggles during the submission exercises, use a low voice and say no. When he calms down, enthusiastically praise him. Next, roll the puppy onto his back and hold him there until he calms down. Play with his feet, rub his tummy, look in his mouth, and again, speak in a calm voice. When he's calm and allows you to do all this, let him get up, show him your love, and give him a kibble of puppy chow puppy food. No. Stay. Good boy. Good boy. Once you've established your leadership with the submission exercises, it will be easier to train your puppy. After you practice these exercises, you'll be ready to start teaching basic obedience commands. You may find that your puppy doesn't obey or won't even stay in one place long enough for you to teach him. You may be tempted to chase after him, grab him, or scold him, but that only frightens a puppy. So it is best to clip your puppy's leash to his collar to maintain control while training these basic commands. If your puppy is unwilling to cooperate, try again at another time. Always do your training sessions where there are no distractions and when your puppy is calm and relaxed. Exercise him a little first to help him get rid of excess energy and he will be more attentive during training sessions. While you're training, always be consistent, firm, and fair to your puppy. Teach only one command at a time. When he masters one, move on to the next. <laughs> to teach sitting, say sit, then help your puppy to a sitting position. As soon as she's sitting, reward with a kibble and praise. Repeat this several times. Don't reward her until her bottom is planted firmly on the ground. Count to four, then praise her. Good. Okay, now practice with your puppy. Sit is a very useful command. When she's sitting, she can't jump on people or furniture or anything else that's off limits. I use sit to discourage jumping up for attention. If my pup wants attention, she must be in the sitting position. Then she can have all the loving she wants. Remember, when giving a command, always use your puppy's name and lavish your good puppy with praise and a kibble of puppy chow. The next command, come, is a moving command. Before any moving command, you should use your puppy's name and be enthusiastic. For the command come, it is helpful to switch to a longer leash. Come on. Show your puppy you have a kibble and start walking away. Kneel down so you are less of a threat and encourage her to come to you. Give her a few seconds to respond. When the puppy comes to you, give her the kibble and reward her enthusiastically. Time for another practice session. Pause the tape and try it yourself. While training the command come, never use a harsh tone. Your puppy may associate the command with getting scolded. If your puppy doesn't respond to your command quickly, reel her in with the long leash, praising her all the way. It's very important to teach your puppy not to jump on you, other people, or furniture. When the puppy jumps on you, lean forward and nudge him off with your knee as you say his name and off. Duke off. Sit. Good puppy. Tell him to sit, and when he does, praise him. You're a good dog. Yes, you are a good dog. When you are teaching the off command, try not to tell your puppy down, because this is a separate obedience command you will teach him later. Your puppy will be excited to see you, and he will want to jump on you. Don't ever pet him when he has jumped on you. You'll be rewarding bad behavior. Practice this command as the opportunity arises. The next command is heel. Heel is to be used when walking your puppy for exercise. This is not a time for elimination. Remember, your pup should eliminate in his designated spot. Heel is how you will teach your dog to behave on a walk. While you're on a walk, talk to him. Give him a reason to walk with you. To teach the command heel, your puppy should be in a sitting position. As you tell him heel, pop the leash forward and begin walking with your puppy on your left side. His right shoulder should be in line with your left hip. If he tries to forge ahead, say your puppy's name, pop the leash backward, say heel. When the puppy follows you as you direct and is in position, give him a kibble and lots of praise. 
The down command is similar to the sit command. Start with your pup in the sitting position. Say the command down. Down. If he's resistant, you may have to help him into position by pushing him onto his hips so he can't get up easily. When he's in the correct position, reward with a kibble. Sit. Good. Good. Down. Keep your praise to a minimum or he may be tempted to jump up. That's a good puppy. The next command to teach is stay. Good boy. Say the command stay. Stay. Then take a few steps backward. Good boy. If your puppy follows you, show him your open palm. Place him back into position and repeat the command, stay. As you practice, tell him it's good to stay. Once your puppy knows the down command and the stay command, you should teach a combination, down stay command. Then always reward with a treat and plenty of praise. Always be firm, fair, and consistent. After you give a command and your puppy obeys, make him retain his command position for about 10 seconds. This way he will learn to wait for your next command. Then praise him. I recommend that you review this tape a number of times. Practice with your puppy often and praise him when he's done a good job. Remember with a little time, patience and consistency, you can have a well-trained puppy and a wonderful companion. In addition to practicing with your puppy at home, I recommend taking your puppy to an obedience school so a professional trainer can help. I haven't covered all aspects of training, but you now have a good foundation. And dogs can be trained at any age, so if your puppy is already grown, it's not too late to get started. You'll soon see all the wonderful benefits of owning a well-trained puppy. He becomes part of your life and your activities. He'll love to be your companion and you will experience the pride and satisfaction of having such a well-behaved dog. You're well on your way to being a loving puppy parent. You deserve congratulations. You've shown that you want to be a responsible pet owner. Now you know that showing your puppy you love him means much more than just a pet or a cuddle. Your love includes socializing your puppy and training him well, along with caring for his health and nutritional needs. That's why at Purina, we say a puppy needs three things. Love, love, and puppy chow.